actually put my hand on you now, Dave. We don't have to stand two meters away. Yeah, let's pray. Yeah, Father God, we just want to um, thank you for, for Dave. We want to thank you for um, who he is, God, for how you've shaped and molded him into the man that he is today, God. We thank you for the integrity that he has, God, and for how um, he leads us so well as a father in this house, God. And we thank you for the preparation that he's put into this morning. We just pray, Holy Spirit, would you just come and uh, fill him afresh right now and that he would just speak from a place of overflow, God, and and we just pray we would continue in this attitude of just wanting this fresh encounter, not being in a routine. So just give us open hearts um, to receive what it is that you would want to say to us this morning, that fresh challenge, God, that you have for us. So we just pray that you would encourage us, that you would uplift us, you would um, correct us this morning and, and as Dave comes to speak. Um, so just continue to minister and move, we pray, Holy Spirit, in your name, God. Amen. Morning, everyone. It's good to, good to be together this morning. So yeah, we were on our new themes, cool new graphic, isn't it? Um, Nat and Tim have done for us during the week. Um, welcome, Holy Spirit. Um, just it's it's beautiful. We, we're recognizing we can't speak enough about the Holy Spirit. There's never a point where we say, well, we've taught on that a few years back. People know all about it. Um, and so we're excited even over these number of weeks. We'll look at the series in a little while just to unpack a fresh and a fresh way, just the Holy Spirit, uh, and as he would reveal himself to us. Um, but before before we do that, we just wanted to do some uh, family business um, just within church here. Um, it's, it's it's beautiful seeing over the last number of, of weeks and months and recognizing even over the last couple of years, there's been new people who have been coming in and around us, circling around us. And, and if you are new with us even today, we want to say you are very welcome you're welcome with us here in Emmanuel. We hope that you feel at home. We hope that you experience family here with us. Um, and yet we, we recognize that there's moments for us as a church community that there comes points for, for many of us where we, we recognize that there's, there's something we want to commit ourselves together in this way. Let me get my, my clicker here. Uh, over at the side. Uh, and, and what we, we run every year within church, in the last couple of years, we've done this online, which has actually turned out pretty good. Um, Zoom, most people hate Zoom, but it's been pretty effective in um, how we've been able to utilize it in this way. We run on Believe and Belong in every January over four Sundays. And with believing and belonging, it's just simply, it's allowing us to understand. We, we don't use the word membership anymore, right? Because it's so easy to say you're a member of something, but you're not really fully committed to it. Do you, do you get that? Like, I, I was a member of Slim and World while binging in bags of crisps. So you, you, don't, you don't have to be fully committed just to be a member of something. Um, and yet we recognize it within the church that it's more than just simply, it's, it's about our commitment, our commitment together. And, and what we did in Believing and Belong, and we took just people through a process of four weeks just to explore together really what it is, what were our ways, our history, what were the things that we were committing ourselves together. And people took that away to pray and to seek the Lord about it. Um, we, there was forms that just filled out to say, listen, we want to commit, we want to be part of this local church. We want to give ourselves to it. We want to be part of everything that you're doing together. Um, and elders have visited them over the last while. And so this morning, all I want to do, there's, there's names that are on the screen. This is from 2022. Uh, your name might be on the screen here. Hopefully, if you filled it in, your name is on the screen. Um, I haven't missed this out. These are some of the names in of people who have done believing and belonging this year. I want to make note, though, in 2021, in the swirl of COVID and everything was happening, there was another group of people who completed believing and belonging and in the same way were committing themselves. And this morning, I'm going to invite Phil to come up as father of this house to, to pray a prayer of welcome. And all I simply want to say this morning is, if your name's on the screen, I recognize even for some of the people who did believe in a belonging this year, there's not that they're not committed. If their name's not on the screen, they just want to continue to pray into that. Uh, and we're continuing the journey of this. But if your name's on the screen, and if you completed believing a belonging last year, and for you, that was that moment where you said, well, this is where we're putting down roots. I would love for you to stand with me this morning. Um, and then Phil's going to come and just pray. So would you stand this morning if your name's on the screen, if you completed it last year and are saying, this is where we are, this is, this is our home as family. I would love you to stand this morning, could you? Brilliant. Let's pray for these guys. It's so exciting, isn't it, to see um, new people come to church. It's, uh, it's always the delight of our hearts. And it's not a matter of um, joining something. It's a matter 
of being added. And uh, I think that's the key. It says that the Lord added to them daily those that were being saved. And so it's just lovely that um, what we've always tried to do is create an environment of a home and a family. Um, and uh, yeah, we're delighted for new people. So God, I just pray this morning. Thank you for these folks um, whose names are on the screen. Thank you for the folks standing in the room. We're excited, Lord, about what you're doing in people's lives and in people's hearts and excited about our church. And so, Father, we thank you, Father, for life and vitality. And we just pray, God, your abundance upon every family. Lord, we um, don't take this lightly that their names are just on a database. Father, we thank you that these names are crawled over and prayed over. And God, I just ask you, Lord, that you would just minister strength into every home and every family. And even everybody in this room right now or those watching online, Father, we just ask you, Lord, as we um, kick off last week and this week and the theme of welcome, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our family fresh and anew. So Lord, may your abundance be upon each and every one, your fullness and your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And just finally, just to say, obviously a big part we, as, as the family grows, there's just different moments. I recognize this as I sit around um, Al Najari. I've seen photos of you recently with your family and it's, it's growing, it's multiplying. Um, I'm, I'm seeing with even as I sit around the meal table with my own sisters and I sit with my own siblings, you know, there comes different moments within families. Um, and I recognize that for us, as we've grown as a church family, there's dif different expressions of people that we're connecting with. Uh, as we're engaging with um, more and more people here embedding and being part of the family, we've poured it down. We've Tabar churches who are part of the Tabar family. We're relating and connecting with one another. And Nua is another moment for us with this as we are connecting with other churches in the nation as we're doing family life together. But the thing I just really wanted to say just before we get into the preach this morning is this is another key family moment. This is another key moment for us as a family. This is not something that is separate. This is us. <laughs> this is part of us. And, and I would just love as an invitation this morning for you not, obviously there's day tickets if you can't make the whole weekend. We'd love you to be part of it with us. That's the first thing we'd love you to say. I'd love to say because even as, as Warwick was referenced in the last week, you know, with the big church serve, it was great. And we would love for, for all of you to be part of those moments with us that we can do family life. But even with this, Especially, I would love for you to be able to be there. And the other thing, just simply this morning, Barbara's going to share a video just from Heather here this morning. We would love for you to be part of this as we could lead the way as a family in this and what it is to serve other people who are coming to this weekend. And Heather's just got a little video she recorded just for 30 seconds. We're going to watch this together and then we'll pray them again into the Word. So Barbara, let's, let's see the video. Hey everyone, New Year Festival is now just five weeks away and we hope that you are already signed up, that you've got your tickets and that your tents are ready to go. If not, it's not too late. You can head to the New Year Festival website and get your tickets online there. Tiffany and the team have been working really hard um, to create an amazing kids program for all of the kids that will be there. Um, but we really need your help in volunteering. So if you are able to volunteer um, at a new festival, then come and speak to myself or Froggy or Tiffany um, and we will sort you out. Um, remember that if you volunteer for the whole time that you're there, your ticket is free. And also if you volunteer for at least two of the sessions with the kids, then you get a 50% discount. We are so looking forward to seeing you in Newcastle. Yeah, so if you could volunteer help in any way, I know we're talking about for the kids and youth, but if there's any way, then we would love for you to be part of it. We would love uh, to do this together. So this morning, we're, we're back onto their theme, Welcome Holy Spirit. It was, what, what, a, what a sermon last week. It was one of those ones as Phil preached it, just sensing the anointing and the word that he brought last week. And I was come into this this morning, this is just simply the question we just continue to ask. Well, this is the theme, just the overview. This, this morning, I'm going to be looking at these three words, the person, power, and presence of the Holy Spirit. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be exploring this further. We're going to be looking at the life in the Spirit, all that's available to us as believers. We're going to look about then the significance about the infilling of the Spirit, what we mean by the baptism of the Spirit. And then finally, then the gifts of the Spirit that are given to us so that we can help other people. And 
And we're excited to journey in this series. We're excited to really press into more and more and more of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But there's simply this question we started with last week. And we're asking again, well, who is the Holy Spirit? Because as I look around the room, I recognize that from, as, as Phil would often say, the faces differ. So it is the different things that are going on in people's lives. And yet I recognize the different stories and the different pathways and the different journeys that we've, we've all been on. As I look around the room, I recognize that there's many people who have been brought up in different church backgrounds and different cultures. And, and with that, then it brings with it just different theological understanding and application then of who Holy Spirit is. We've been brought up with different viewpoints. Uh, we, we began light in a life group we're going to be exploring just alongside this theme about the Holy Spirit. And, and we did that last week in life group. It was great. We actually just spent the first half hour just sharing, let, let's talk about our journey. What, what has been our thoughts on the Holy Spirit? You know, what has been the viewpoint we've been brought with? And it was interesting, you know, just some people just really speaking just out of an honest place where they're saying there's, there's often been moments of fear or skepticism around certain aspects of the Holy Spirit from their journey, just different things they've learned. Other people, though, from a different, completely viewpoint, who've been saying, well, I wasn't really brought up in church, so I don't really have any of that, that stuff going on in my head space. You know, it just, I believe about the Holy Spirit and what it says, and I don't really have any of those other things. And I recognize that as we start in today, we have all had different beginning points, even as we come to today, and we're all at different points currently. And this is why even in this series of welcome Holy Spirit, we're just all of us, all of us, this is our prayer. Welcome Holy Spirit, would you meet us where we are at and lead us closer and further into a heart and truth of who you are, of who you really are. Would you reveal yourself to us, give us those eyes to truly see you and ears to truly hear you and to know you. And, and as we begin this, then this is why we just want to take these three words. And the first word we just want to speak of again, and Phil referenced a little bit about this last week, about how the Holy Spirit actually is a person. I loved, out of all the things that Phil spoke last week, I loved how he began, right? And it just caught me. Like it was, I remember as, as a school teacher, I remember the, when we were training, they always said, you know, the, the first part of it, of your, of your lesson is, is the cru- is most crucial because if you don't get someone in the first two or three minutes, you've lost them, right? They always used to say this. So you'd see like many speakers and things would get up and maybe they would tell jokes or different things to try and keep people engaged. Phil said something last week which was true in who he was, but it, it had me. And this morning, I want you to hear this. Phil didn't stand up last week to simply say, let me teach you, we're going to teach you some really, really key theological principles and all these sort of things. Phil stood up last week and said, let me introduce you to my friend. And it was like, whoa. For me, it was like, I, I, I want to listen. I want to listen. Let me introduce you to my friend. And this morning, I want to just speak out of my own place of honesty as well, just in my own journey. I'm going to be reflecting a little bit on this at the end. But this morning, we just want to begin by saying this. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is real. He is a person. He is real. This morning, we want to introduce you to the individual again afresh of the Holy Spirit. And uh, our prayer is that as we journey these number of weeks, that you would continue to to pray and invite more of an understanding of the Holy Spirit, that we would lead into the truth of who he is. Phil last week again began to really press into how the Holy Spirit is, a, is an aspect and a part of the Trinity. This is a symbol of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, unfortunately, has become often the forgotten or misunderstood part of the Trinity. And so as Phil said, often what we have been brought up with in Northern Ireland is just a simple understanding of the Trinity as the Father, Son, and Holy Bible. We feel like the Holy Spirit's the one that we can keep safely at the side. We don't really have to think about it that much. We bring it up in this way. But when we come to this idea of the Trinity, we see that it's not necessarily, we're saying, it's never about the fact that there's three separate gods or three different modes of gods. It's three distinct persons. This word in the screen, three distinct persons who share the same essence, nature, and will while at the same time remaining completely interdependent. Like it's one of those ones that's a, you know, that emoji with the head exploding sort of thing. It's like, that's where my head goes, right? If I was doing an emoji off the back of that, it's like three distinct persons who share the same essence, nature, and will. Like they are completely one. Jesus would have said this. 
his prayer for us was that we would be one with him as he was one, completely one with the Father, but where they were distinct persons, be at the same essence, nature, and will, while at the same time remaining completely interdependent. And the reformers, they developed it further, and they had this word, perichoresis, which re referenced the dance of the Trinity, that while there was the three individuals that they were so together as they moved and they flowed together that there was just this beautiful oneness. And again, just one last thing on the screen. The individuality of each person is maintained while sharing the life of the other. And so, for example, right, just some of the things which we can see from Scripture, how each of them, as they are at work, each of the, the persons of the Trinity, as they're at work, as how they flow together in this dance. So even Phil referenced last week at one of the first places that we read of the Holy Spirit is actually in the book of Genesis. And we read it says about how the Holy Spirit hovered over the deeps, the depths of the water as, as the Father was speaking things into being, as the Son was with them, as they were imagining everything that was lying ahead, as they were speaking into being the beautiful design and perfection, as God would look at the end of each of the days of creation, look at it and say, oh, man, that is good. As they looked and they imagined it as the Spirit was at work and was creating, they were together in this way. As Jesus comes and embodies and takes on flesh, one of the things that just strikes me with it is that as Jesus was holy and lived the life of holiness and separation unto the Father, and yet Jesus says this, I don't do things on my own, but I do what I hear the Father say. And in Jesus' baptism, as he's baptized and as he comes out of the water, the Holy Spirit descends on him in the form of a dove. And it's at this point... It's at this point in Jesus' life that suddenly he starts to step into the signs and the wonders and the miracles as Jesus, while he is fully God, but he is fully man, as he is empowered by the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit comes on him and he starts to step into these signs. And yet we could say, oh, so does that mean that the Spirit was... No, because what we actually see then that Jesus says, and again, this is the head banging emoji type thing, what we actually see the Spirit saying, or Jesus saying about the Spirit is this, I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And listen to these words. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said to you that he will take what is mine and will declare it to you. Imagine, right, in this, in this space, what the Spirit hears, he declares. What the Father's heart and imagination and desire and plans and purposes are for you as, your, as his sons and his daughters. The Spirit hears it and he takes it and he reveals it to us. For us as Jesus' church, and the desires and the plans that he has for us, what the Spirit does is he hears it, is that he takes it and he reveals it to us. He leads us and he guides us. And this is who we have in our life. He is the shepherd of the flock. He speaks to us in this way. The Trinity, the beauty of the Trinity, so at work and so together and so as one. And so what we need to realize, and simply just one thing to say in this, the Spirit speaks to us. God hasn't stopped speaking. And more than ever, then we need to be a people that earnestly desire. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 8. And, and this, th this is a key part for us now. What does it actually mean to be known as a son and a daughter of God? This is what Paul says. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, they're the children of God. Listen to those words. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, are the children of God. What does it mean to be a son and a daughter of God? It means that we are led by His Spirit. We are opening ourselves to be allowing the Spirit to lead us and to guide us, not where the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, don't lean on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge Him, allow Him to lead you through His Spirit, and He will make straight paths for you. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And firstly, just to say in this point of person, then this is why Paul would simply say, earnestly desire the Spirit. We just begin today where Phil began last week, just simply by saying the Holy Spirit is real. And for us as believers, 
And this is where I want to just finish today, just by sharing a little bit of my own story and where I have got to and where I was led to in this and the journey of it. But for us, it's one thing that we can almost try to theorize or try to work them out, but these are real person for us to seek after and to invite and to follow after in our lives. He's a person. And yet what the Holy Spirit speaks of for us in our lives is also the presence of God. We read this, this is one of the more, the core central themes of the Bible. We see it from the outset of scriptures that God desired to be present with his people. We see that as he walked and he talked with humanity, with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And yet when sin comes into the world and it almost feels like it distorts everything, it doesn't change the heart of God. He still wants to be present with his people and and the old, not to take too much time in this, but in the Old Testament, we see it where he comes and he presences himself with them through the likes of the tabernacle, through the likes of the temple. God, we even see as he comes upon individuals in the Old Testament, like one of the, the cool people in the Bible, the name Bezalel. I read about him in the book of Exodus and this man where he's been, he's been given the task of crafting and coming up with the design for the tabernacle. And it's almost like a whoosh, the Holy Spirit comes upon him. And he's flooded with everything that he needs to be able to do this purpose. We see it in the Old Testament, the Spirit coming upon individuals. And yet, Peter stands up on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And he says these words, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old man will dream dreams. How God presences himself now. Listen, as we've just, what a beautiful moment just being able to glorify Jesus this morning for all that he has done. As those that have been saved and redeemed, we have been reconciled and restored into relationship with the Father. And part of what that means for us is that we are now those that carry the presence of his spirit. And with that, this is how he now presences himself in your life. <laughs> In my life, as we gather, as the church together in these moments, he presences himself with us. And here's the beautiful thing, just before I go away from this point, for all that you're going through, this is the promise of God. He is with you. He is with you. For all that you feel that you're carrying alone, you're not. He is with you. And this has always been the heart of God. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews says. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. But actually God said that back in the book of Deuteronomy. That was Old Testament language. <laughs> this was still the heart of God, even in Old Testament. Um, at an Old Testament time, his heart was, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And Jesus, when he's here in the scene of time, before he leaves in the, in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, he says these words, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age, always I'm with you. I will always be with you. And then Jesus says this then about the Holy Spirit. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate or helper. And listen to this. And he will never leave you. He will never leave you. I'm with you always. His presence is always with you. While we might not sense it or we might not feel it, the truth that we need to know, he is always with us. He will never leave you. You are not alone. We never need to journey or struggle alone with whatever decisions, with whatever difficulties we are facing in life. He is with us. He will never, ever, ever leave you or forsake you. Amen, right? Like what a God. He is present with us. This is what the Spirit speaks of. And then finally, before I just share just a little bit of my own story with us, and then we round things up to pray. The Spirit speaks of power. The Spirit is how God outworks himself here on the earth at this time. In line with the Old Testament roots, the Spirit of God meant God's presence, but also his power. Not just a mild influence upon us. But this, I just really feel, is crucial for us. The Spirit of God is the living power of the living God. It's the living power of the living God. He's alive. And part of how he manifests that power is through us. And listen, for us as the church of Jesus, this is the beautiful thing. Jesus actually, Jesus actually um, allows us to see this even in his own life. So 
I love that when Jesus says to follow him and to imitate him, Jesus actually shows us this. Jesus, who was one with the Father, Jesus is one who carried the full authority of heaven. What we actually see is that Jesus shares that there's a difference between power and authority. I taught on this a number of years back, but there's a difference between power and authority. This word dunamis for power and the word exousia for authority. Authority means that you have a legal right. Jesus, who was carrying all authority, and Jesus, what we see, as I mentioned earlier again, that in that moment of his baptism, as the Spirit comes upon him, he is filled with the power of God. And Jesus then starts to outwork everything of heaven and the earth at that time. But this is what he starts to lead all of his followers into. And so let me show you this. Stay with this simple step. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus sends out the 12. Jesus sends out the 12 disciples. I shared this diagram. If You might have seen it before a number of years back. But if you're new to church, again, we've, I don't apologize for repeating this because this is truth. Jesus in Luke chapter 9 sent out the 12 and what he sent them out with because this is what Jesus carried and this is what he was modeling to all who follow him, right? Grasp this. Jesus was modeling this to all who follow him. We're all following Jesus, aren't we? So let's listen in and press into this is what Jesus was modeling out. He sends them out with this and he called the 12 and he gave them power and authority. Those two words. He gave them power and authority, the legal right in his name to be able to outwork this. And then it takes it a step further because in Luke chapter 10, then he sends out the 72. And in Luke chapter 10, we read these words again. So it says, after the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go, the 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy. There's something about the power and authority that were given to all of his followers at that time. And then in the Great Commission, which we have read earlier, and you're thinking this is the moment when it's going to apply for all of us. The church has been given the power and authority. Jesus speaks these words to his followers and he says this, all authority This is the Passion Translation. All authority of the universe has been given to me. Now go in my authority and make disciples of all the nations. And in this moment, Jesus gives authority. And I I would be imagining that the disciples were maybe scratching their head and saying, but Lord, what about the power? Every time you sent us out before, you give us power and authority. And what Jesus does at this point, you read it in Acts chapter 1, as Jesus has delegated authority, Jesus tells me, he says, go and wait, because I'm about to send you another who would come. And on the day of Pentecost, as the Holy Spirit is poured out on all flesh at this point, the disciples, the early church that had the authority that was delegated by Jesus, suddenly, as the Spirit comes upon them, are filled with the power of heaven. And now for us as the church with the authority that we have, again, let's think about it from a Trinity, um, a Trinitarian perspective, with the authority that we have in the name of Jesus and suddenly carrying the power of the Holy Spirit, we are alive to work out all the ways that the Father has for us and the plans that he has for us as the church of Jesus Christ. This, this is the dream of heaven for us. Imagine this, the power that is available to us on behalf of the Holy Spirit, like that's pretty awesome, right? <laughs> that's pretty cool. And this is what Paul would even say in Romans chapter 8 the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. The Spirit of God, some of our translations say the same power that raised Christ from the dead, lives in you. And this is where, just in terms of my own reflection and my own journey, you know, I realize that one of the things that can so easily hold me back at times is just my own mind and my own thoughts around some of this. My own struggle with him being honest around even from some of my journey from the past and some of the my beliefs that I've been brought up with around Holy Spirit. It's hard at times, I get that. And this is why This is simply our prayer as we finish, as we come towards these last five minutes. This is simply our prayer, what Paul would pray in Ephesians chapter 1. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand 
in the heavenly realms. Paul says, I pray that you will understand this incredible greatness that you will get this. Because you see, Paul said this as well to the church in Galatia. He says, are you foolish? It's almost like we're beginning this, this. The reason why we stepped into this relationship with God is because it began with the Holy Spirit. And yet Paul says, but yet you're now trying to perfect it in the flesh. It's like it began with the Spirit, but now you're trying to get on and just do it all in your own ability and in your own strength. And now you're trying to be perfected in the flesh. The reason it began is with the Spirit and the reason it completes is with the Spirit as well. Let me just tell you a little bit about my own story just for a couple of minutes. And then we're going to get the band up just to, to lead us in a song just to be close. So I, I was brought up in, in a family that believed in the Holy Spirit, but in a church background that just didn't really believe in the essence of the, Holy, the gifts of the Spirit or the things of the Spirit for today. And yet I was brought up just with a real intrigue around spiritual things, just with different stuff from our family background. And then probably just with being in school and meeting other believers from other churches as well. And some people who were, who were talking about this thing called tongues and I didn't have a clue what it was. And so there was always this level of intrigue. And, uh, and probably one of the key moments for me, and not the labor in this, but one of the key moments for me was when I ended up in Cuba. And this is me and a team that went open doors. There's me on the left, rocking with a post-90s hairstyle, looking like I just put my hands in a Van de Graaff generator. Uh, and we, we were out in Cuba, and it was there for the first time that I really encountered just people who just genuinely loved Jesus in such a pure, pure, pure way. And this was the church in Cuba who were persecuted. And what I saw there, do you notice like sometimes in your mind where it's just like, it almost feels like an optional thing for us. Oh, I don't know if I could be bothered going to church. Do you ever have a thought like that goes through your mind? Sometimes even when you're in church, you go away with a critique of, oh, it was too long or it was too cold or... Blah, 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 blah. Sometimes what I think to myself when I'm hearing myself say some of these things. And yet for these people who walked for hours because they just wanted to be together in something like this, just to be able to worship King Jesus. People who were just desperate just to be part of the church of Jesus and recognizing what it was. And it was there in that moment when I was in Cuba. I began to see some of the stuff that I read in the Bible that I was brought up to believe wasn't for today. I actually saw it. So like we were there smuggling Bibles in as part of Open Doors. And I remember one of the days we were driving around in a car and we were looking for this church and we didn't know where it was. And there standing at the side of the road was the pastor of the church. And uh, one of the pastors who was with us recognized me and said, oh, that's the pastor of the church. We had driven maybe about an hour. And this guy, he spoke to us and he said, I knew you were going to be here. The Lord came to me in a dream last night and told me the time that I had to come and where to meet you, that it was coming. And for me, as, <laughs> as a guy who's told, that's not really for today. That's just, that's just stuff people are making up. And suddenly it was just like, what? That, that doesn't make sense. And then I, this was... Omar and Chelys, this was one of the main pastors that we met there. And the, these guys, just what they modeled out to me in terms of just love for the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit. Chelly taught herself English by listening to wow worship CDs and reading the inserts. And she was our translator. I think she maybe had the gift of tongues as well, I think. And, um, and yet I came away from that time. This was transformational for me. I came away from that time like... I came back in terms of my own relationship with the Lord, but I came away realizing that there was something about God that I hadn't fully grasped of his, of his power and his might at work. And, uh, and I remember coming home because the Bible says to earnestly desire these things. And I remember at university, night after night, once I'd fully got my head around the fact that God did actually still love me and wanted to be in relationship with me. Then after that, I was just like, God, I just want more of your Holy Spirit. And I remember night after night, just down beside my bed, just praying and asking, Holy Spirit, I want more and more and more of you. But it was the same thing again. As I was inviting more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I was almost trying to just excuse it and say, well, I don't think that I could really do that or trying to work out what it was like. And I remember one of the nights in, at my mom and dad's house, um, I had this vivid dream about Omar, the guy on the left. And in this dream, I, I, Omar was about to die. He was in hospital and he was about to die. And I woke up. Do you know the way when you wake up sometimes when you have a dream? I don't know if you've ever had this, but you just know this is more than just a dream. That actually God speaking. And I remember just like it was like as heavy as any. I remember the spirit saying, you need to get up and pray. And so I knelt beside my bed and I just started praying and praying and praying for Omar. And it was at this point 
that we're going to be talking about in a number of weeks, but it was at this point that I started to speak in tongues and I started to pray in, in tongues. And because I had no rationale for it, I thought it was the weirdest thing and it, it scared me a little bit, if I'm being honest. Probably again from some of my journey that I've been brought up with. And I, I just thought, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> That's, that's, I, I didn't want to tell anyone in case I got in trouble for doing that as well. But I just thought, I can't do that again. Two months later, I got a letter from Chelly, uh, who would have written often to say, just as an update, and she said Omar had been in hospital. He had been in a serious accident on his bike and was about to die, but there had been a turnaround in hospital. And I don't think it was necessary. I think there were other people that were praying, but it was at this moment that I realized, this is real. These things that we read about that you can almost think is a historical thing, a historical document that is just something for us to look back on. This is the living power of God that's alive. And for me, I realized at that point, I wanted more and I wanted more and more and more and more of it in, in my life. I hungered after, again, this is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, I hungered after, I was earnestly desiring. But an honest reflection I just think that it was obviously just those doubts that were just something that I just needed to constantly overcome. And so I did what I probably thought I needed to do. I came and spoke to Phil about it. I just had started in the manual at that point, And I remember Phil bringing me in. I thought I was about to get beat up. I got brought into a small side room with Phil and Paul Rathor and Tommy McCracken. And these guys prayed for me. And at that point, I just started to I started to speak in tongues again at that point, and I started to realize this is something okay for me to s step into. But one of the things I just wanted to finish just to say, Johnny, if you guys maybe want to come here, and let's just uh, worship as we close off with this. Uh, I recognize that for me over my life, you know, today I just really want to say this. This is why we've done this over these last two weeks, and we've just been repeating it, because we want you to grasp for yourself our belief, our honest belief and desire, the Holy Spirit is real. He's a person for us to hunger after. But where Robbie started today, and we hadn't spoken to each other, I guess is where I want to finish. As I was praying about today, it's just this one phrase. Over the last two weeks, I felt the Spirit probably speaking more to me, but I felt even for today was just really important for us. And for us to grasp, even as we step into not even just what we unpack in this series, but what God wants to reveal to you in your life day and daily. And it was just this phrase that I've been carrying over the last two weeks, and it was simply this, the uniqueness of intimacy. The uniqueness of intimacy. You see, if the Holy Spirit is a person, which he is, then the place in which I engage with him is in this relational space. And the depth of any relational space is that measure of intimacy. And yet I know this, I, and you know it yourself, that one of the things that can often be a stumbling block in intimacy is that it can be disbelief. But if we're being honest, one of the things that can often be a frustration point, and even what I think can come into our lives, is when for me, I feel like I can often look back to those moments and I can look and I can compare what Robbie was sharing and I can think to myself, when I'm praying and I'm calling out, and listen, it's really important that we do hunger and desire more and more and more of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But I think that I got to a point where I was almost looking more of that. I was looking more of that that I'd had in the past. And what we need to realize is that every moment that the Holy Spirit comes to engage with us in a moment of intimacy, it's unique and it's fresh. And what happens in any relational space is that we get discontent because we think it's not as good as something we've had in the past. Marriage is break down because of it. Intimacy needs to look like something we think. And yet in this moment with the Holy Spirit, as God leads us, there's a uniqueness and in intimacy that he desires for us. And my encouragement to you as the guys uh, start to play and start to lead us in worship at this point, just as we close, is that even as we start to press into, because next week Phil is going to be speaking on the life and the spirit. And what I would love to encourage you to do is don't come with your mind made up about what that should be like. As we start to press into, and even this week, and as we close today, just pray in Holy Spirit as we welcome more of you. Don't come at it with, Holy Spirit, I welcome you, but this is how I welcome you. And what I think it should be like, Holy Spirit. 
is that we recognize in this moment of intimacy there's something unique and fresh and new that he has. And this is the life of the Spirit that he leads us into. This is why he is present with us. And as we... Uh, as we sing this song, why don't you stand your feet with me? Robbie's, Robbie, I'm going to get Robbie to come and close in a little while here for us, just as we finish. And so even in your, in your heart, maybe where you've been as well, there is okay, that's what we're going to sing, there must be more than this. But it's if we come up with there must be more of what we think it should be we miss the uniqueness of the moment that God has for us to step into when we're saying there must be more of you that's a very different thing and so this is just simply our song we just close with let's just invite and just welcome Holy Spirit in this moment and Robbie will come and lead us in closing prayer there must be more